So when we talk about liming materials, they're not all created equal. How do we compare them? So when we're managing lime applications, it's important to remember. Limestone is insoluble, relatively speaking, so it dissolves slowly and moves downward in the soil very slowly. So when we want to compare lime quality, we have to take into account the calcium carbonate equivalency. In different regions, different states may have different terminology for this, but it means the same thing. It's the relative capacity of a material to neutralize an acid. Pure calcium carbonate is what we compare everything to. So calcium carbonate, calcium CO3, uh, equals 100% calcium carbonate equivalency. A liming material with a large amount of magnesium can exceed 100% CCE because on a weight basis, magnesium carbonate neutralizes more acidity than calcium carbonate. The size of limestone particles determines how quickly and completely the limestone dissolves. So we use a fineness factor in Kentucky. Many states calculate it differently. As just an example, in Kentucky we use the amount of lime that passes through a 10 mesh sieve that has a 2 millimeter hole, but does not pass the 50 per mesh sieve. And we say that that's 50% effective. So the coarser material is not 100% effective. Then that which passes the 50 mesh sieve, 0.3 millimeter hole, so pretty fine, is 100% effective because it will likely dissolve in the first year. Particles not passing the 10 mesh sieve, so remaining on top of that coarser sieve, we attribute a 0% effectiveness to because they won't dissolve in three to four years. So we have the chemistry of the liming material, what is the basic cation, magnesium or uh, calcium, and then what is the anion, that gives us the calcium carbonate equivalency. We have the size of the limestone particle, which tells us how it will dissolve and how long it will take to dissolve. So from the uh, chemistry and the, the particle size, the physical characteristics of the lime, we try to calculate a relative neutralizing value. Again, in different regions, this may be called uh, or used different terminology, but generally we're using this fineness factor. So the amount passing a 10 mesh sieve minus that passing the 50 sieve, so the amount caught between those two sieves, and we divide that by two because it's 50% effective. And then we take the total percentage of the lime that passes the 50 mesh, the very fine component, and we add that in, and that's the fineness factor. So it's the percent of the lime that's fine enough to be active this year. And then we have the RNV is the calcium carbonate equivalency times the fineness factor divided by 100. The relative neutralizing value is the calcium carbonate equivalency times the fineness factor. And so to get our bulk lime rate, we take 100% times the 100% effective lime recommendation. We got that from our pH buffer capacity and from the soil pH, so we have that 100% effective lime, and we divide it by the RNV. So if we're using pure calcium carbonate, we would just add the amount of the effective lime recommendation. If we're using something with a 50% RNV, we would have to add twice as much. So this figure shows that particle size or fineness does matter. <clears throat> on the horizontal axis, we have particle size based on mesh uh, size, and we have on the left-hand vertical axis the lime efficiency, and on the right-hand vertical axis, the lime rate. And we see that as efficiency decreases with the open squares, that the lime rate must go up the closed squares. With fineness, most of this gain in efficiency with finer product is due to the reaction time. And so this figure shows soil pH on the vertical axis, reaction time across the horizontal axis, and different fineness lime materials. And so if we have just using bulk lime, uh, reaction time is going to be very slow, if non-existent, and then the coarser material, 8 to 20 mesh, is going to slowly raise pH, whereas if we use a very fine lime, we have uh, almost, relatively speaking, within six months, an instant reaction where we're raising the soil pH rapidly. So once again, as an example, we can calculate bulk lime recommendation if we have the RNV of the lime product and the 100% effective lime recommendation. And so if you get a lime recommendation from your soil testing lab and they don't know which lime you're going to use, you can do this calculation on your own. If the 100% effective lime rate is 2 tons per acre and the bulk lime has an RNV of 48%, then we simply take 2 tons per acre, divide it by 48%, and we get 4.2 tons per acre. So we have to add roughly twice as much bulk lime as what the effective lime recommendation is. There are multiple calculators available on the web to compare lime values. I've just shown here one example from the University of Kentucky Soil Testing Lab. And so you can find some of these uh, calculators. They need a couple simple inputs like 
uh, what's the source of your lime product, what's the lime RNV, uh, what's the purchase price in dollars per ton, the hauling cost you can add in, the spreading cost, and uh, the soil testing lab effective lime recommendation. And it will tell you uh, how much per acre the cost is for each of these products. And so here's the output from some this sort of uh, calculator that's available on the web and it tells us that the lime quality will influence what the cost per acre is. Sometime it's cheaper to use the less effective lime and in some situations it's going to be cheaper to use a more effective lime. So this table shows some of the liming materials in just a general sense. <clears throat> we can see that limestone, uh, calcium carbonate, uh, if it's pure, the CCA is about 100%. Uh, so this would be a high cal lime or calcite. And then we have burn lime, unsaked lime or quick lime, which is a calcium oxide. It's going to have a much higher CCE. And then we have slaked, hydrated lime or, or sometimes called builder's lime. It's a calcium hydroxide. And again, it's higher CCE than uh, pure calcium carbonate, but less than the calcium oxides. And then we can have calcium magnesium carbonates. This is typically referred to as dolomitic lime or high mag lime. And it's going to be a slightly higher CCE than pure uh, calcite. Uh, marl is a low quality calcium carbonate, a different mineral formation, and it's going to have a lower CCE. Typically, bulk lime is going to be a combination of uh, these different molecules, and it's going to have other impurities in it, which drives that CCE down below 100%. So these different uh, qualities of lime or different types of lime are going to re result in different lime ton equivalents, we call it, based on that RMV. So this table shows the RMV of some of these products uh, from uh, calcitic lime that is pure. So the pure lime recommendation would be one ton or 2,000 pounds per acre. Uh, burn lime with a higher RNV is going to require about half as much lime material. And then all the way down to a very poor liming product like wood ash or rock phosphate, we need uh, you know, between 5,000 or even 30,000 uh, pounds per acre. So what is pelletized lime? It's made by granulating finely ground, ground ag lime. So it's a, it's a high quality ag lime. And the fine particles are bonded with lignosulfates. Uh, so it's going to be a high CCE, high cost lime, plus we're adding a handling procedure of binding them together, so that's going to add some more cost. And uh, since it has many fines, the question often is, is it a higher CEC? Does it actually act faster? Well, not necessarily faster, uh, but it is usually purer than ag lime. So it will take less pelleted lime, or we call it pellet lime, than ag lime to raise the soil pH. But from a time standpoint, those lignosulfate bonds have to be broken down. And uh, the surface area, it's a much larger, coarser material, and uh, so it's not going to break down as fast. So while it's a high quality lime, it may require less tonnage per acre, uh, typically it is not going to break down faster than ag lime because of that bonding material. Another question that we're often faced with is, what is liquid lime? Well, it's a liming product dissolved in water. Typically, we use a very high quality, high, highly soluble product with small particle size that dissolves easily in water has a very high RNV. It acts quickly, so if you need a fast acting lime and you need to change the pH rapidly, then this is probably your answer. But it does not provide long-term liming activity. Those coarser particles in a bulk lime that don't break down immediately give us some long-term residual liming effect. Typically, uh, liquid lime consists of about 50% lime and 50% water by weight. It varies by product. So per ton of liquid lime, you would only be getting about half a ton of lime. So if you need two tons per acre of 100% effective lime, you would probably need to ex apply well in excess of four tons per acre of the liquid lime. And this would be well in excess of 700 gallons per acre. So this is a consideration. It has the advantage of being very quickly reacting and can be applied with a liquid applicator, but the disadvantage is that you don't have any residual liming ability in the long term, and you're going to have to apply a lot of product to the field. So what about calcium chloride? In the past, I've been faced with mar marketing claims from people uh, selling calcium chloride and claiming it's a liquid lime, dissolved cal calcium chloride in water. And some of their marketing claims are that liquid calcium presents growers with an alternative solution to lime applications. Calcium neutralizes soil acidity. And ag lime tends to be insoluble and can take years to break down and show its effectiveness. Well, from uh, your experience with this class, you know that it's the oxide, hydroxide, carbonate, or silicate that removes the hydrogen ion from the soil solution and raises the soil pH. It's not the calcium. If we look at calcium chloride, 
there's no mechanism for it to raise the soil pH. So we know that the first two claims are false. Calcium is a basic cation and as part of the lime reaction does replace the acid cations on the soil exchange complex, but that's not the same as raising soil pH. It is simply reducing the activity of the acid cations. What about their claim that ag lime tends to be insoluble and can take years to break down and show its effectiveness? This can be true and we have to manage around that because we know how ag lime operates, but calcium chloride is certainly not an alternative for a low pH soil. It will not help you. So while limestone can be moderately soluble, uh, the fine particles in limestone are soluble and they do provide calcium fairly quickly. So their calcium chloride product has 10% calcium according to some marketing materials. At the recommended application rate of 2 to 5 gallons per acre, and we can say that it's 11 pounds per gallon approximately, that's 2.2 to 5.5 pounds of calcium per acre you're applying according to their recommendations. There are 800 pounds of calcium in a ton of calcitic lime. Assuming 100% effective CCE, even a low-grade agricultural lime will typically provide a couple hundred pounds of soluble lime and soluble calcium in the first year after application. So while you will be getting two and a half to five and a half pounds of calcium from that calcium chloride product in the first year, you'll be getting a couple hundred pounds from even a poor lime product. 